My guest today is Ellie Kay, and she, of course, has had plenty of experience about being a military wife with her husband being in the military. And your husband, is he still in the service? Actually, he has retired from active duty. However, he still flies military aircraft fighters. Okay, very interesting. We'll have to keep him in our prayers. And, of course, an author, you've written many books to help the military families. And share with us, first of all, firsthand, because... You have, as I said, you've experienced this. How has the current economic situation affected our military? Well, it's very difficult for military families right now, economically speaking, because there's a set pay that military families and members uh, can count on on a regular basis. Sometimes that's impacted by combat pay or hazardous duty pay, and it can fluctuate a little bit back and forth. But as prices go up, gas prices are... um, you know, going up and the cost of food is going up. All of these things impact military families. And there's this misconception that military families live in free housing, they get free medical care, they shop at the BX and the commissary, and things are practically free there. And that's just not true. It it is really hard for military families economically right now. Well, with your own experience, what is the number one problem military members and their families face today? Well, I think personally um, the number one problem is the deployment. Um, It's called the Operations Tempo, and it has increased to an incredible rate right now, and families are being deployed and redeployed over and over and over again. And that was always the hardest thing for me. I spent a a good many years of my children's growing up years. Uh, We still have a few at home, but those uh, first years especially were very difficult as I was single parenting a lot of babies uh, running around while my husband was deployed. And how did God help you through that difficult time? Well, the Lord was everything to me. It was my faith that kept me going. I felt that God had called us into the military. I felt we had a specific purpose in the military. And in a lot of ways, I thought, wow, you know, we're kind of like uh, missionaries that are going all these different places courtesy of Uncle Sam and every time we go someplace new we can kind of plug in accomplish the work that God wants us at that place and move on and these were short assignments so I kind of look at it as we were on assignment from God. You partnered with the nonprofit organization Operation Homefront. Could you share with us how God has been at work through that? Well this is an organization that's one of the largest uh, nonprofit charities that has the DOD stamp of approval Uh, for military charities. They do everything from help to build houses for injured soldiers when they return from combat to uh, putting on girls' night outs uh, for wives and moms that are facing multiple deployments. And so I have partnered with them to bring my Heroes at Home conference to these military bases, and our goal is to give away free books. So we have corporate sponsors, and they help us do that. And these women come, they pay for nothing. Um, They get, you know, a dinner hors d'oeuvres, they get a nice conference, and they get a book when they leave. And these conferences are really making the difference in them being able to cope and feeling like they just can't go on. So it's been a great partnership. So God's really been using you through your Heroes at Home conferences. And and do you have any special stories that you can share about where you saw God working in their life in a special way, those who are uh, part of these military families? Well, one of the ways is just um, in sharing the different characteristics of a hero at home. When we were called in last year to go to the Stryker Brigade, this was a unit up in Alaska where the men and women had been gone a year. Half of them came home. Everybody was excited about them coming home. And then they were redeployed again two days later, and the other half did not come home for another four months. So they were redeployed and extended. And so these families, mainly young women with babies that had never seen their daddy yet, and Mm. they were absolutely devastated. It was a very hostile audience that we went into. And when I started giving the characteristics of a hero at home, I felt God's spirit really come over me. It was a secular environment, but it was God's spirit nonetheless. And when we talked about courage, I told them that I know you're angry, I know you want to vent on your husband the next time you talk to him, but what he needs to hear from you is that I love you, I'm proud of you, and I'll be okay. And you don't do any of that other stuff right now, because if he's worried about you, which he is already, then he's going to be distracted. If he's distracted, then accidents happen. When accidents happen, there's a loss of life. So if you want to do your part to keep your soldier and the soldiers in your unit safe, you tell your husband that you're going to be just fine. And then when he comes home, let him change diapers and do all that. (laughs) So uh, two days later, we came home from that conference, and we got a phone call that, uh, which you may have seen on CNN with... uh, young American troops being taken out by sharpshooters. One 
of the, the soldiers that fell uh, was the spouse of a wife that was in the audience. And when they went to go give her notification that her husband would not be coming home, one of the first things that she said was, I'm so glad that I went to that Heroes at Home conference because I was going to vent on my husband because he's my best friend. I just tell him everything. I tell him how I feel. But instead, I can live with the fact that the last words I ever spoke to my husband while he was alive were, I love you, I'm proud of you, and I'm going to be all right. Boy, those are important words, too, like you said, they need to hear. And how many times you think about soldiers that were deployed and, and maybe they had a fight or something with their spouse and left on a bad note. How devastating that would be to get news that they had passed away. Right. And, and you know, that's one of the things that we do. And what's, what's wonderful about where God has brought me for this time in this point in history is the fact that when I get up and I speak to these women or when they get my book and they read it, most of them have one or two children and they're very young. And they look at me and they say, oh, my goodness, she had five babies in seven years, and she made 11 moves in 13 years. If anyone can identify with what I'm going through, then she can. So I have this instant credibility, and they listen. Mm -hmm. And when they're willing to listen, then they get the advice that they need to be able to cope. And you talk about that your primary purpose is to help military families learn to develop the characteristics that will help them cope with a military lifestyle. And could you tell us some of those characteristics, the top 10 characteristics that the Lord has taught you on how to be a hero at home? Well, we've already talked about courage. Uh, flexibility is another one, and that's what I like to say is, is happens when you're stationed to go to Georgia and your household goods are going to Guam, you know. So you have flexibility in uh, what's kind of going on in your lifestyle. Uh, the other thing is a sense of humor. My mother was a military bride, came over from Spain, and she was a wonderful example. And one of the things, you know, my mother would do would be to just uh, cope with difficult aspects of life by making sure that she kind of kept her sense of humor. And one of the things she would say to me was, Oh, Lee Song Ellie, life is so hard. Um, that you just, you cannot please everybody all the time, and so you need to learn to just please me. <laughs> and so <laughs> I thought, wow, that's good advice. So I actually tell my children that. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> well, I know that uh, you, of course, probably went through some difficult times, and we, we definitely want to say thank you to you and all the families that have people serving in the armed forces, and we, we thank our troops for the great service that you do for us to help keep our country free and safe, and, and the sacrifices that you made. We, we don't take that lightly. And what are some of the ways that friends and family can help the military family cope with military lifestyle? Well, I think it's really important for families, for communities, to rally around these military families. Oftentimes, they are geographically separated from their own families. And so whether it's a 3, 6, 12, or 15-month deployment, a lot of times they stay put where they are. Well, that's where the community comes in. And when there's a long deployment, like a one-year deployment, Usually the first month, everybody's there. They're just calling. They're bringing over meals. They're doing all of that. By month two, it starts to wane. And by month three, it's all but stopped. And so I recommend that you adopt a family for a year, for that year of deployment especially, that you put it on your calendar and you assign out different tasks to different people in the church. For example, one month, the youth group, it's, it's you know, youth group leader's responsibility to contact that family and let the boys go over and cut the lawn. Or maybe once uh, during that month, the, the girls that may be certified in a Red Cross babysitting certification or something can babysit the children while mom gets a break. So, And then um, another time, the women's ministry can bring them a meal or throw a, a surprise girls' night out party uh, for the wife or, you know, just be creative and fun. And, and even if it's a, a Sunday school group taking up an offering to go out and buy them gift cards to have a break and go eat out at a restaurant or, or go to a movie and have a gift card for a movie theater. You know, those kinds of things are all really practical, helpful things that speak volumes, and mm -hmm. it just really makes all the difference. Well, I know that you minister to the military families, but do you also get to minister with a special message for the troops themselves? I do. And when I go overseas, I mean, that to me is just, you know, one of the greatest things about what I get to do, and that is to go speak to the troops themselves. And I did that recently. I did a tour of United States Air Force in Europe, went, did 21 presentations in uh, four different countries and five different bases. And 
oftentimes there was, you know, 90% green in the audience where they were just all active duty military members, and a lot of them are quite young. What they see overseas is mainly what they can see on CNBC and CNN, MSNBC, uh, Fox News, and a lot of times they get the media that is so anti-war and so anti-military in some ways. So when I go over and I talk about the, the characteristics of a hero, which are the, the people that uh, you know that I'm talking to directly, and I and I challenge them with the idea that putting on a uniform doesn't make you a hero. It's displaying these characteristics and serving with integrity and honor that make you a hero. And I really build them up. And one of the messages I give to them from America is that we love you, we're proud of you, and we've not forgotten you. And I have had in the audience um, these crusty veteran uh, chief enlisted officers that are actually um, crying, you know, tears streaming down their face at the thought that America hasn't forgotten them. Oh. And that is an incredible honor to be able to go over and to encourage them and to thank them while they're in the heat of it because mm -hmm. they're deploying. They deploy down into Iraq and they come back into Europe. And to be able to speak to them has been an incredible honor. And I, I just can't imagine how difficult it has to be to be away from your family for so long and, and never even knowing if you're going to see them again. I mean, what sacrifices they have made truly, and, and many of them who've lost limbs and uh, their lives have been changed dramatically, and, and they do it so selflessly for us and for their families to keep us safe and free. Well, and Jan, you know, you bring up an excellent point in that, and we have heard it said that the greatest generation was the incredible um, men and women involved in World War II, and that was truly a great generation. But I am telling you, as I go and I see worldwide these young American troops and they know what's going on when they sign up. It is an all-volunteer force. They were not drafted into this. They volunteered for this. I beg to say that we have a pretty great generation right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we need to keep them lifted up in prayer and do all that we can to help them as well as their families. Absolutely. Do you have a website where people could go if they wanted to find out more information about your ministry or about Operation Homefront? Certainly. You can go to lek.com. And uh, there, there is a mili there's a link uh, for military families, and they have all kinds of great military links, people that I partner with, including OperationHomefront.com. Thank you so much, Ellie, for your time. Thank you very much, and thank you for the ministry that you're having right now by doing these programs to our military families and their troops.